Lauren. Welcome to Spark TV. Yay! I'm so excited to be here. Especially I'm so excited. My... Oh, you've got bubbles. Yes. yes. No. I'm, right. I'm feeling very niche today with my rhubarb champagne, but um, it's delicious. So I'm feeling like super average with my regular champagne. <laughs> <laughs> champagne sounds amazing oh it, and you know what it's delicious it doesn't sound very nice but it's delicious and um so I'm down for next time I come across a bottle of rhubarb champagne and if you see one there you go I'm gonna buy one I'm absolutely approval. <laughs> totally this is like the best advertisement of rhubarb champagne I right. <laughs> <laughs> endorsing it all over the place. matching with my top two you know I know that is them. so good you're so on brand today <laughs> you like it <laughs> oh my gosh amazing well look before you and I I know you and I are just going to talk each other's ears off so before we start let's start by telling everyone who you are and what you do well my name is Lauren Dry. Um, and I'm the Connection Catalyst. I am a transformational relationship and parenting coach. So working with the nervous system, um, I help driven and ambitious women um, bring calm and connection and contentment and play back into their home. Um, and I adore what I do. I um, It's absolutely my calling and I feel so privileged to be able to share with so many other women what I experienced as well. Mm. I mean, who does not need more calm in their life? I mean, no. I, don't, I don't have kids, but I feel like I need everything you have. <laughs> <laughs> well, what I've found over the years is that a lot of the qualities that help you to be successful, help you to be driven, to be focused and, you know, go after what you want. Um, when it comes to having a family and having contentment and peace, sometimes they clash. So mm -hmm. it takes, um, you know, a whole mind, body, soul approach to kind of balance it all out again so that you can enjoy the moments in between, which is what it's all about. You know, we love all the highs and the, the, you know, the thrills of, you know, following your calling and following your, following your passion. But, you know, when you come home and you're not feeling aligned mm -hmm. and, you know, just snipping at your partner all the time and, and not being able to kind of feel balanced with your kids, you know, it doesn't really feel like you quite have that, that those wins that you're really after. And, you know, it just takes some balancing and some getting to know your nervous system to come home again and, and bring that into your home. Yeah. And it kind of makes you wonder like what it's all for, if you're not enjoying the moments. You yeah. Know? You Absolutely. kind of wonder why you're working your ass off if you you're not do. coming home to that love and that spark. Yeah. And, it, you know, you start to feel a little bit challenged, like, you know, all of these qualities that make me so good at one area of my life, how come I can't just tough it out and make it work at home? Mm. Um, and then what you figure out as you go on is a lot of the qualities that make you so good at one thing, they might need a bit of balancing. <laughs> Um, or just a new language, some new tools so that they can help um, modulate the, the imbalances that come with, you know, being probably being strong, being passionate, being driven, mm. and then trying to have peace in your home, um, trying to find the doorways that match them both together as opposed to it being um, in conflict. Yeah. And talk to me about the nervous system. So I find that really interesting, again, as, you know, being a stressed out business owner, it's something that I'm starting to encounter a little bit, people talking about regulating your nervous system, but what does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, it's becoming a little bit fatty at the moment, which I love. I'm so excited. When I first started looking into nervous system work, it wasn't very fatty. It was all very new. I... um. I had a lot of challenges after having kids um, and having a successful career and, you know, having my own consulting um, work and finding that the same abilities I had to kind of nut it out and fix things mm. uh, wasn't working at home. So I was doing like the talk therapy. We were doing like marriage counseling and meditation and you know teepees under the moon if you can think <laughs> of it, I did it that and is amazing. <laughs> right you know I was like I'm gonna do all the things and I was feeling really um 
kind of resentful and bitter because I was like, this is what they say is supposed to make you feel calm. This is what they say is supposed to make you feel really regulated. And, you know, it was great when I was in the moment, like, you know, having a good talk therapy session, finding out what happened when I was three and 10 and having a good when cry in the teepee, <laughs> like in my teepee with some cacao and it was lovely. Mm. But then I'd come home and I'd be like trying to bring all that Zen back and then someone wouldn't put their shoes on or, or we'd be in a fight about the dishes. And I was like, oh my God, I, I can't, like, how does this work? How am I meant to kind of bring all of that in my day-to-day life as opposed to going away feeling great and then coming home and just being triggered? Yeah. Um, and I figured out along the way um, that the way that we think our brain works actually doesn't work that way. So you have the, these parts of the brain, the, the high, so to, break it down really simple. You've got like the higher cortex where you get all that information from talk therapy. You know, you can make considered decisions and, you know, understand the consequences of your actions. But then you've got your amygdala or amygdala. There's two little like almond shaped organs in the base of your brain. And they're like your fire station. And it actually operates. So if you're just getting all of this knowledge about what to do and what to say, you know, like nonviolent communication techniques and aware parenting and what to say to your kids and rah, rah. But your your emergency fire station is jumping in ahead mm-hmm. and getting in in front of your higher cortex. You're kind of left with these um, guilt responses of, I know what I'm supposed to do and say, but when I'm really feeling angry or scared or hurt, you know, I just can't do it. I, I lose my temper and I yell or I shut down and I walk away um, and I can't connect. And that's because your brain is designed that way. So when you realize that, and when you realize that 80% of the nerves in your body go from the body to the brain, not the other way around. Wow. So you can start to understand how important it is to use the whole body in regulating yourself, as opposed to just bullying your body into calming down, using your high cortex that's not really in charge in the first place. You know, it's only in charge of like 20% of the nervous system process from the from the brain to the body. Everything else is a feedback system, a loop that allows your body to go, okay, is it safe? Can I relax? Can I calm down? Mm. Um, can I reach for the tools in the higher cortex? Because if the amygdala is in charge and it feels that like fight, flight, fall and freeze response, it's not going to let you access what you know anyway. Mm, wow. So when you understand the science behind it and that, the science is really only now just starting to catch up to modern psychology. That's when you realize it's not you. It's not that you haven't been doing the tools properly. It's not that, you know, what you're learning isn't useful. It is. It's really useful. You read all the books, go to the TP sessions, you do the <laughs> parenting. Like, yep. great, it's fantastic. And make sure that you've got some tools to work with how your body and your brain operate together so that it's useful and that you can reach it when you need to. I love that because that's, I just love what you said when you said, stop bullying your body (laughs) to come. And that's exactly what it's like. Like, and even, you know, I know as us all uh, high flying, uh, overachieving business women listening right now, that's what we do, right? We're like, why haven't I got this? Calm down, do this, meditate, get up at Mm 5am, go for a walk. Like it is that bully, bully, bully into Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it's so funny that we take that approach to something like calming down and mm-hmm. being a better leader or, yeah. wow, like that's so interesting that you said that. Do you have like, are there any kind of like small things that we can do? Absolutely. To take so steps? Mm. I found when I was discovering, you know, embodiment techniques, you know, to embody calm and regulation, embodiment techniques, mm. um, the challenge that I was finding is a lot of them you know so for example a lot of people are familiar with tapping the Mm. most popular forms of tapping come with you know really long scripts and you do it before and you do it after you know you try and figure out what happened my tools for tapping um I'm the founder of the transformational tapping technique which is essentially how um to use tapping tools in the moment and Mm. bridging techniques to get you out of that dissociation you know where you literally feel out of your body yeah um and they are processes that you can actually use in the moment when you're feeling really really inflamed the first thing you should always do is start getting to know your unconscious mind so we have parts within us 
everyone's familiar with your inner child everyone's familiar with your like higher self I like to refer to the inner child as like your feelings and your needs you know your precious feelings and needs that are underneath you know you're fighting you know you're not really fighting about the dishes you're feeling lonely you're feeling unsupported Mm. you know that's your inner child the needs of the inner child and then you've got your higher self which is actually the knowledge that's in your higher cortex um, and probably to do a lot more with your intuition as well so that's your higher self we can kind of have familiarity with that but there's a third part and that's actually your protector that uses your protector part uses the amygdala uses your fight flight fawn freeze responses to instead of allowing the inner child to say I'm feeling really lonely and I need some support jumps in and goes, right, I'm the protector. I know how to fight. I'm going to just jump in and I'm going to tell you, you should have been home at this time. And, you know, you need to do this and you need to carry your weight. And I have a lot to do, you know, that kind of protective behavior. Mm. We need to start getting to know all of our parts so that when we feel that inflammation, we can go, oh, I see you. This is just my protective behavior coming out as opposed to feeling guilt and shame, Mm. which makes to dig in harder mm. um so first step for me is always get to know your protector start to know to get to know your nervous system start to have some familiarity with how that behaves and then what you can do is start to find some safety in reaching for those tools and it can be anything from one of my favorite it's called a bridging technique so a bridging embodiment tool is something that allows you because what you'll be familiar with is if you're feeling really inflamed and you're kind of in the moment, you're in the zone and you're trying to get all these things done. The last thing you want to be doing is meditating and taking 10 big big breaths. Yeah. You're a mother. It feels infuriating doing that sometimes. It's infuriating. And if you're a mother, you'll understand what it feels like to tell your children that too. You know, take 10 big breaths, sweetie. They're like, no, doing it. What that feels like. Just saying what we're all thinking. Yeah. Exactly. (laughs) Um, So what you need is a bridging tool. Um, And when you're in a state of dissociation, or dysregulation it's like your brain and your body are separate Mm. and that's a survival technique because you know you don't need to be learning you don't need to be digesting you don't need to be healing if you think a tiger is chasing you and really when your kids won't put your shoes on and the dishes aren't done sometimes your brain genuinely believes it's the same thing as a tiger chasing you so it releases all the same chemicals so bridging technique allows you to work with that response so you can start to come a bit closer to your body and start reaching for tapping tools without it feeling like hell no I'm not going to do that Mm. really simple one that I want to share with you um, to play with. So the pillars of my work are curiosity, compassion, and play. I love play that. It. The first time, a couple of times you might reach for it. You're like, nah, this isn't doing anything. And that's okay. It's a bridging tool. It's not meant to fix everything, but mm. it's going to you to start to come a little bit closer to your body, start to bridge the gap between the amygdala and the higher cortex, start to bridge the gap between your danger, your fire station response, your protector and your higher self. Mm. So that you talk about the feelings of the inner child better. So I would recommend playing with tools that allow you to remember that you've got a body again. Mm. And a really good one to start with is just four finger taps. Peace is within me. Peace is within me. Touching each one of your fingertips. Make it a nice solid tap. You know, if you're just kind of tickling your fingers there, you know, it's not really going to do anything. Um, <laughs> Now, it is a bridging tool and it's just going to start to bring you a little bit of awareness. I guarantee you, no matter how inflamed you are, you're going to be able to do this. You're going to be able to fiddle with your fingers. Yeah, It's going to start giving you a little bit of a bridge back to yourself so that you can say, am I safe or am I not safe? Is this a really big, dangerous, life-threatening problem or is this a conversation about the dishes and perhaps I need to take a minute, do some um, regulation work um, and then come back to the problem from a place where I'm not feeling inflamed so I can get my needs met, you know, as opposed to getting in that loop, that cycle, like cyclical loop that doesn't go anywhere and doesn't help you in the end. So it's all about just giving you bridges closer, closer, closer back to yourself so that your body can start feeding back to your brain that there's no danger, there's no tiger chasing you you're going to be okay you can start accessing the information in your higher cortex again and showing up the way that you want to and the more regulated you are the more you'll be able to model that not only to your children but your partner as well and you're not going to be two people just clashing against Mm. the world you'll be able to start being a team again it's beautiful practice and that's probably the first one on a short podcast I would say start playing with it curious question and play see where it takes you 
This is so good. I'm just like sitting here thinking about, you know, in business, when you are staring down a huge page full of to do's Mm. and you don't, and you're so overwhelmed and you don't want to do a thing and you know that you need to get all of this work done, but you can't even put one foot in front of the other. Mm. I actually, you know, I know, you know, this is kind of off, off topic a little bit, But this concept of a bridging technique Mm -hmm. of finding a way to get out of the overwhelm, out of being triggered and actually being able to put one foot in front of the other. I almost feel like this idea of doing that, that peace is within me, like just something small to get you back in your body is actually applicable to work as well. It's so important. And it's funny that you mentioned that in relation to work. Um, one invitation I would give you is what I spoke about right at the start. As, you know, get to know your nervous system and then use the tools. So mm. the, another really beautiful way to get to know your nervous system and what's stopping you from doing the work and getting stuck on that to-do list is do a body scan. And the body scan tells you, okay, where is my key point? So for me, my key point when I'm feeling locked and I don't want to reach for my tapping tools, I don't even want to reach for my bridging tools, mm. I'm locked in either that dissociation or hyper-focus or hyper-vigilance, mm. which, yeah, can help you get things done when you're in the zone. But if you're trying to connect to your family or if you're trying to drop into that beautiful fluid motion that allows you to um, produce amazing work, mm. find your lock point. And for me, my lock point is my jaw. So when I'm feeling really locked, dissociated and kind of shut off from myself, I, the first point I always go to, and you can find your point by doing a body scan, you know, you might find you're feeling tense and anxious and butterflies in your belly. You might feel like you you have shallow breathing. You might feel your shoulders are really tense. But mm. for me, as I do the scan, I come closer, 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 closer. And I go to my jaw and go, where do I want to move? Where do I want to move? All of these things don't feel great. But the first thing that I have the capacity to move is my jaw. And what's really interesting is I, I, I'm notorious for like grinding my teeth or like mm. tapping my jaw along to a beat. So it's a key point for my nervous system. And if I can stretch my jaw out and move it around, suddenly I'm able to take a breath in. Mm. And then I'm able to put my hand on my belly and use an embodiment technique to regulate and remind my body where your parasympathetic safety nervous system is, which is actually in your intestines how crazy is that wow. if you chicken and egg scenario if your digestion's off your mindset might be off so they're linked together your safety nervous system actually gives you a lot of feedback to your brain if your gut's out of line and vice versa so I'm able to kind of use my embodiment techniques but the key point for me is my jaw unlock the jaw and then you can slowly start to reach for more tools pieces within me take a deep breath reach for an embodiment tool, reach for your tapping. Mm. So, this is so good. I already know mine's my shoulders. I can yes, feel myself so- being tense right here, right now. Yeah. And how yeah. cool is that? So if you yeah. did your body scan, you might find, okay, I'm crossing my legs or I'm feeling with my pen or something, but that body scan is, I'm not go- I don't want to change my hands. I don't want to change my legs. Hang on. Mm. What can I move first? Where is my lock point? Mm. And then you go, okay, I'll start with my shoulders. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Now I can take a breath. And it's a cascade effect. But if we just find that bridging point first, Mm. you can start to come into regulation. And it's with respect for your protector part because what we're not doing, like with a lot of embodiment techniques, a lot of regulation techniques, we're not trying to beat your protective part into submission by going, Mm. I don't care how uncomfortable you are. We're going to take 10 big breaths. I don't care how dissociated you are. We're going to use these calm down tools and we're going to say the right thing or do the right thing. These protective parts, these behaviors they came from a place that once upon a time really did keep you safe whether it's emotionally or physically or whatever the the situation was either in your childhood or just as as nervous system behaviors and habits you picked up along the way so we have to work with it yes yeah and not just again bully our brain into submission Mm. by bypassing all of these nervous system tools that are actually inbuilt within us to help us regulate in a holistic way yeah. with the mind, the body and the soul I love it I'm even just thinking I was literally having a conversation with my partner this morning and we're both like super stressed at work we're both mm-hmm. you know there's all this stuff happening around the home and we had that conversation like is everything okay and we're like oh well I think I'm a bit stressed and he's like I know I'm being a bit stressed and not present and I was like 
literally just thinking just before I walk out of my office, actually doing that body scan and figuring out, because I know in myself right now, I'm just in this like lockdown mode. Like I'm out there talking to him, but really I'm just thinking about work and being stressed about all the things I have right. Totally. Yeah. And I literally had this conversation on text this morning and I was like, that's what I need to do. I actually need to stop and figure out where I'm holding and let it go so that yeah. when I do walk out into the kitchen and have a conversation, I'm not actually physically more mentally back in my office. Yeah. But it gives you some emotional literacy as well. So mm. that instead of walking into a conversation being like, right, I'm going to tough my way through this. We're going to connect. Yeah. It's going to be fine. Yes. And in the background, you're bubbling away going, oh my God, I've got so much to do. He's being so frustrating. Why can't he just deal with it? You know, <laughs> kind of a language. Why are you asking like, me what's for dinner? <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. It mm. gives you some emotional literacy tools because you're getting to know your body more. And when you get to know your body more, you get to know your nervous system more. And when you get to know your nervous system more, you can get to know, again, probably your most precious part, your, your inner child, which relates to your feelings and your needs. Mm. And so if you do that scan beforehand, you're like, okay, I'm feeling locked up. Okay, this lock, locking up comes from my work and I'm, I don't want to let that go. I'm really kind of passionate about that. I want to stay in this zone. Okay, can I give my body some safety so that it doesn't feel like it's, you know, letting something go into the wind and it'll all get lost. I can give that reassurance to my body. And that way, when I'm feeling reassured, I can show up in a conversation. And instead of saying, how was your day? Mine was busy. Okay, let's just get into the food. <laughs> you yeah. are able to say, hey, oh my gosh, I'm feeling a little fragile today because mm. I've got so many balls in the air. Um, and I need some, and you know, you know what the need is because you've given it to your body. This is the embodiment tools. Mm -hmm. As you as you move through the motions, you find out your feeling and your need. You say, I need some support, or you say, I need some space for five minutes, and then I'm going to be able to come back. So it's that understanding and that emotional literacy with yourself, which allows you to connect better. And what's so cool is that when you start to do that, the people around you pick up on it, and then they start doing it too, especially children. Wow. So, yes, your partner is going to start doing that too because most people don't actually learn most the most effectively by being told what to do. They learn by seeing it being modelled, mm. especially for children. They don't care what you say. They watch what you do. Yes. And if you start showing up with your children and go, sweetie, oh, my goodness, I've had such a full-on day. I'm feeling a little fragile. I'm feeling like I'm trying to do all of these things and – um, I'm wondering if you can give me a hug. I would love that. That's so much better than walking in the door after a massive day and they've just finished school. So they're feeling hectic and all over the shop mm. and going, right, dinner's on, pay attention, take your shoes off, get in the, yeah. in the bath and then just shoving them into bed as quickly as possible so that mm. you can get back to, to business. Yeah. You can have it both ways. And the, the saying that I really love is that it's very unfashionable to say that you can have it all. But if you work with your nervous system, you can design your life and your relationships and your, your family environment in a way that gets all of you uh, and all of your needs met in a way that you can have it all, but not in a way where you're burnt out and, you know, fried and mm -hmm. feeling like there's never going to be enough. There's never enough hours in the day. We just can't get it done. You know, my husband and I, he has his own business. I've got this, um, I, I like to call it my calling. I would I would happily do this 24-7. I've got to be careful not to stay up till two o'clock in the morning. Though. I love that. <laughs> um, and, you know, eat my own words. But we also homeschool. Um, and wow. we've got a life that, you know, we're, we're out. We've got um, seven acres out here and some goats and some chickens. We found a balance that works for us because we've actually shown that curiosity about what do I need? What do I feel? And how can we make this work for us in a way that feels fulfilling? Mm. Just to burn out, burn out, burn out, and just put out fires in the other areas that aren't getting my attention. I love the idea of the the doing rather than saying as well. I think about, you know, I think us as women, we tend to uh, research and find these new ways of solving problems. Right. But when it comes to, you know, if you say to your partner, let's try this, 
it's kind of uncomfortable, right? Because it's new mm. and mm. it's kind of like, well, you didn't try. Well, you didn't try. But if right. you show up and just do, you're so right. It kind of makes it a little bit safer for each other to just give it a go. Yeah. And mm. what I really love is that um, 80% of communication um, is nonverbal. Mm. So, for example, if I was to sit there um, and um, my husband walks in the door and I'm feeling really stressed and kind of like, you know, haven't been managing my regulation or working with my nervous system, but I want to connect um, and I haven't done the work, I can say the most wonderful things. Hi, honey, I've really missed you. How was your day today? But it will come out like this. Hi, honey, I've missed you. How was your day today? Yeah. <laughs> tone of my voice on the podcast even if you're not watching without the body language you yep. can hear the bullshit you're like yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't care <laughs> yes whereas if you do the regulation and even if you say something that's a bit off like oh my god like <laughs> what a day that's not really an invitation for connection but if you've done mm-hmm. the work it's oh honey what a day you know like your whole body relaxes your voice mm-hmm. changes and it's an invitation you know, and when we recognize that, that the power that we have when we work with our body, the power that we have when we work to bring our parts together as a team mm. is so um, fluid. It's so effortless that it's a crime <laughs> that it's not been really made obvious, to, more obvious to us now, because a lot of that resentment that comes with you know, going to couples counselling or mm. you know, working on parenting methods is how come I have to do all of this? I'm just one person. Yes. Whereas when you work with your nervous system, it comes a nourishing exercise. It's, oh my gosh, I feel so great. I'm doing this for myself. And then when you show up, you have clarity about what your boundaries are. You have clarity about what your energetic boundaries are. Mm. And because you feel nourished, people seem to just meet you there or notice when you don't have that capacity and it doesn't feel like a flag to a bull. Yes. There's this really cool video that was went viral recently of um, this bull being let loose in a arena with mm-hmm. university students. So I'd love to see the disclaimer or the, you know, <laughs> the, sign. Yes, the waivers being signed. Yes. The waivers. Sorry, that was the word I was after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The waivers <laughs> being signed. Um, because this bull, the, the University students were scattered around the arena, you know, in, a, in about two to three metres apart, and they were standing still like a statue. And this bucking bull was going in and out of all the students and didn't knock a single one of them down because they they weren't a threat. Like, it, it could, the bull's not blind. You could quite clearly see that these were people. Yes. But it's such a beautiful model of how having a net regulated nervous system um, allows you to show up in the world. Wow. Because... If you are regulated, it doesn't even matter if there's a bull bucking around you. It doesn't see you as a threat or a challenge and it will eventually buck itself out. And it's not Mm -hmm. going to hurt you because you have your own clarity about your boundaries, what you need, where your capacity levels are and how to communicate. So it's just kind of a non-issue. And that person has to go take care of themselves or has to come to you in a regulated way if it wants to interact. This is incredible. How did you get here? So <laughs> has Pretty this good. always been <laughs> has this always been an area of focus? Did you have a career beforehand? Like how did you actually get here? <laughs> yeah. So I had a really a wonderful career, which I loved in human resources. Mm. Um, and then I had a family and I thought I'll take a couple of years off. Um, but I missed it. And so I started doing consulting work and um, uh, helping businesses to retain and get new contracts. And I loved it and and it was a a great career and it was very fulfilling, but I was recognizing that even though I wanted that passion, Mm. when I was trying to focus on it, when I came home again, I wasn't the mother that I wanted to be. I I felt like I wanted to escape. I felt like it was a choice between either be successful and fulfilled at work Mm. or have enough energy to be the kind of mum that I wanted to be. And yeah. I was quite bitter about it. And I, I yeah, wasn't enjoying the marriage. We were like roommates at that point. I was like, what? And, and I, was, I was feeling resentful. I was like, I've done all the things, you know. Aren't you supposed to have the kids, get married, then go back to your career and, you know, have your passions and, and that's it. You're meant to be content. That's, 
those you tick the boxes you ticked all the boxes yeah <laughs> I yeah. did what they said I was supposed to do I even did the therapy and everything and yeah and, wow and I was I was pissed to be honest mm. but I so I started down a, a path of finding alternative forms of therapy um and on my journey this was when kind of nervous system regulation information was very very new Mm. it was like a light bulb went off in my head and I thought to myself and I just went oh my gosh this makes so much sense yes and I started with the nervous system regulation work however there was a point where even when I was doing the nervous system regulation work and I I had adjusted it and created this method um and I was also I you know because as you are when you're highly ambitious and you know you're driven and you really kind of like getting to know all the things I was an aware parenting circle facilitator so I was helping other mums to to know what the right tools were to do but I felt like a little bit of a hypocrite because sometimes I could access it and sometimes I couldn't Mm. the nervous system tools were really great the parenting tools were really great the the heart-centered counseling which we'd done was really great gave me a lot of tools but when I was really inflamed it was still very challenging sometimes to access that and I had a lot of negative self-talk I was very hard on myself um and as as women often are yes. yeah and yes. I was really hyper vigilant I was constantly worried about the kids um I found it difficult to just kind of rest and connect with them at the end of the day I'll just be replaying in my mind what did I do wrong what could I have done better and yeah. and um, there was one night where I was lying in bed with my daughter and I thought I feel like I've stuffed up the whole day just by worrying about what could go wrong mm. so even though I had the nervous system tools and they were wonderful and supportive there was still one missing piece and for me, it was the parts work. It was finding that last doorway of, of being able to allow the different parts of my brain to communicate again, wow. uh, as opposed to I can help you regulate. It's now I trust you to be able to regulate because I trust that I, I understand that my protector part, these inflame, inflammatory behaviors, mm. like either losing my temper or shutting down. I'm not ashamed of that part of myself anymore. It, it actually comes from a place of deep love. Yes. Um, and it doesn't matter if if that protective part came from micro trauma or complex trauma that you know is so common with so many of uh, um, mothers and women of this generation who were mm. raised by parents who were very strict very loving but very very strict and didn't know how to emotionally connect with you mm. um or macro trauma really big traumatic events that protective part created behaviors of you know and even identities of being the strong one, being the successful one, being, you know, whatever it is, whatever that identity is, it came from a place of love and it really did help and serve to protect you for a long time. So when you start to understand that and work with unconscious mind tools, you know, I'm a qualified hypnotherapist now. Um, I'm a parts work integrative specialist as well. And all of that comes together to be able to allow the parts of yourself within you that did split because they had to it's dangerous to be a child who's only showing up um talking about their feelings and needs 24 7 knowing that they're not going to get met so Mm. these splits happen to protect those parts yeah Um, finding a way to bring them back all together so that they can be friends as opposed to the inner child being a bit pissed and saying well how come this protective part is is getting in the way all the time I want to connect and feeling ashamed that you can't reach for the tools in the higher self it's a real integrative process and it did take me a long time to collect all of these tools and this knowledge but it's it's the work of my life to have programs available to be able to share that with women and share that with people and share that in platforms like this you know um I'm I'm really privileged and um it's a blessing I feel very blessed well, we are privileged that you have done the work that you can bring it to us so that we can sort I've been through the out. fire for you. I've got you. <laughs> no, but it's so good. It's incredible because I love how, you know, it's not that you went and took a course and then you repurposed it, you know, as your own. Like you are someone that has had a varied lived experience and you've mm. gone out and you've tried different things and you have come up with something new that actually does help people bridge a gap. And it's just incredible. I, I'm good on you. You are bloody amazing. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. My favorite thing is when I, I finish work with a client and mm. they're starting to do it as well. Um, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to recruit some of my ex-clients because 
they they say the same thing. They're like, oh my God, you know, you talk about it and you look like someone who's regulated and calm all the time. And mm. um, and I didn't think it was accessible. And watching that in people, you know, yeah. you realize that you can help people just by being yourself. You know, my, the last um, client who I just finished um, up with recently, she put a beautiful um, review um, out for me was that she didn't think it was possible, but by doing it herself now, um, her relationship with her parents, her relationship mm. with her partner, her relationship with her kids, like they're doing and saying all the things that she's doing and they didn't do the work. They didn't do the course. Wow. So it goes back to modeling, doesn't it? When yes. you can regulate for yourself, it's not about forcing and dragging other people along with you. Mm. You can actually change the world. You can change your family. You can change your relationships. You can change how you show up in your business just by showing a bit of love and compassion, some curiosity, some compassion and some play with some new tools. And there's so much information out there um, and there's so much um, brilliance that's evolving at the moment that helps you to come into alignment with all of those parts. And it's it's amazing. It's a beautiful thing. Um, and I think it's really been missing for a long time. Um, and it's very empowering to be able to say that if you show a little bit of love to yourself, you really can have a huge effect on the world around you. Um, and that's pretty powerful. It's pretty special. That it is. And it's, it's really interesting as you're talking and, and talking about showing up and showing the compassion and the love for yourself and how that radiates around you. That's literally the vision, the picture in my mind is that idea that your energy is touching mm-hmm. the people around you and having that positive impact, you know, whether it is family, partner, kids, work colleagues, whoever it is like that, I think has the capacity to have huge impact. Huge. Absolutely. Um, and it's it's a a really rewarding experience when you can show up and have a comment from someone that's like, oh, you know, I had a comment um, from someone who actually wasn't a client. She messaged me and said, I saw you at the dentist with your children. You seem so calm. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. And I said to her, I really appreciated that. Like, I really mm. appreciate the comment that you made. Um, and what really resonated most for me in her message was that she said it was a breath of fresh air to be able to see what's possible Mm. you know and that's not something that's unique to one person it's not just oh okay because I've done this work and I've done that you know um I'm just going to be separate or Mm. unique The, Mm. the tools are really repeatable and they're really really usable Um, And I try and release as much free information as I can because I think we all need it. Um, Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. everyone needs to stalk you on Instagram because it's incredible. (laughs) Thank you. Um, And I think that when you have that that passion for something, you know, Mm. you really are in a place where you can do your utmost to release as much information as possible to be supportive. And also if there's people who have the capacity to do work that's even deeper, you know, that's available to them too. Um, and as in as many podcasts and as many videos on Instagram I can do, I, I will promise to keep showing up and and um, sharing as much as um, I can about what has worked for me. And it's nice to be able to say that. It's nice to be able to say that from a really grounded place of what actually has worked. Mm. And then in my clients, oh my gosh I, I didn't almost didn't believe you it just it sounded too good to be true that yes. I, like I'm doing it like I can't believe it <laughs> so that's it's so really rewarding yeah and it's so cool I mean it makes me think you know um you know, my background is sales right and my shtick is I will give you the tools right I will tell you if you want to grow your business if you want to make more sales blah blah blah, blah. like here's how to do it you know and some and you can tell people how to do it but if they don't actually do the work, it doesn't mm-hmm. actually land. Mm-hmm. Um, but I love how in this sense, you that's exactly what you're doing. You're showing up and you're saying, try this. You know, this has worked for me. This has worked for many other people. Just give it a go. And then as you say, if they've got capacity to work more deeply with you, then yeah. they can. And that's incredible. Like it's a, just a great model of, you know, showing up and offering value and having an impact in other people's lives 
through yeah. Instagram or through podcasts or whatever it might be. Yeah. And I, I love what you said there about like just trying. Mm. You know, when you just try, that's that's one of the three pillars of my work, curiosity, compassion, and play. Because yep. then you get to find out why it's not working. And then you go, use a bit of curiosity, go a bit closer, yes. find out why your protector is getting like, oh, uh, this feels a little resistant to me. It might mm. be the first time you've ever even asked. It might be the yeah. first time that your protector has ever been seen and given a chance to say, I'm really trying. I'm, I'm, I'm not a bad guy. Mm. I'm just trying to show my love for you the only way I know how. Yes. And then because you've got that safety, a little bit of a new relationship, it starts to feel a little bit more safe to be able to try something new. I love it. Well, if we leave everyone with one idea today, try something new, actually just give it a go. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. You are absolutely incredible. Lauren, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Cheers. I love it so much. my rhubarb champagne. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's your treat now for sharing your wisdom with the Spark community. Um, I'm so grateful for you. And I'm walking away today with tools that I can implement myself, which means I know that, you know, the woman who is listening right now has gotten that as well. So thank you. You're so welcome. And I can't wait to see. I'd love to hear if anyone's listening, if they can do that body scan and find out what their key is. You know, I love that you think that, that you found that yours is your shoulders and mine's oh, definitely I know, I feel right now. <laughs> um, That's really cool. So yeah, play, curiosity, compassion and play. And I'm so privileged. Thank you so much for having me. I always love having hanging out with you. It's, <laughs> it's, a, joy. it's a joy. So good. And yes, and we'll absolutely link up Um, everything so that people can connect and share their experiences with you as well. Awesome. Thank you so much, Danielle.